From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from three donors. The first is the D'Souza family, Ivy, Tanya, Yannick, Shivani, Jaden, and Gia from Toronto, Ontario, in loving memory of Frank D'Souza, beloved husband, father, and grandfather. Frank passed away 25 years ago, and the family wanted to remember him in a special way today. They also wanted to thank our Lord Jesus Christ for many blessings and graces received. The second are Joseph and Diane Devaney from Westchester, Pennsylvania, celebrating of their 35th wedding anniversary today. In thanksgiving for blessings received, for their daughter Katie and for special intentions. The third is Barbara Woodstock from Nanaimo, BC, in loving memory of her husband, John James Woodstock, on the seventh anniversary of his passing, and their parents, Violet and George Jackman, and Lottie and William Woodstock. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. From Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the faith of God's elect and the knowledge of the truth that is in accordance with godliness in the hope of eternal life, that God, who never lies, promised before the ages began. In due time, he revealed his word through the proclamation with which I have been entrusted by the command of God our Savior. To Titus, my loyal child in the faith we share, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. I left you behind in Crete for this reason, so that you should put in order what remained to be done and should appoint elders in every town as I directed you. Someone who is blameless, married only once, whose children are believers, not accused of debauchery and not rebellious. For a bishop, as God's steward, must be blameless. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered, or addicted to wine, or violent, or greedy for gain. But he must be hospitable, a lover of goodness, prudent, upright, devout, and self-controlled. He must have a firm grasp of the word that is trustworthy in accordance with the teaching, so that he may be able both to preach with sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict it. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to anyone by whom they come. It would be better for you if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Be on your guard. If another disciple sins, you must rebuke the offender. And if there is repentance, you must forgive. And if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, You could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The letter of Paul to Titus, from which today's first reading is taken, as well as the two letters to Timothy, are known as the pastoral letters. The word pastoral here points to the fact that these letters have to do with the life and ministry of the many small churches called into existence by the preaching of Paul and of other missionaries. In these letters, Paul was speaking to two of his most trusted collaborators, Titus and Timothy, and is spelling out for them their responsibilities in regard to the Christian communities in the areas in which they have been active. The letter to Titus begins with Paul introducing himself as a servant of God and as apostle of Jesus Christ. Here is elsewhere, Paul insists on his relation to both God and Christ. For the Bible in general and the New Testament in particular, all things begin with God. They come from and depend on him as the creator. The world and humankind, including ourselves, are on a journey to final fulfillment, a journey in which God remains involved with them, guiding them through prophets and saints and other gifted leaders. Paul identifies himself also then as an apostle of Jesus Christ. Apostle in the New Testament sense is someone who's sent by the risen Christ to proclaim the good news of salvation 
in his name. If the story of Christian life and of Christian faith begins with God and creation, it continues with the life and mission of Jesus. In him, the Son or Word of God has taken on a life like ours in all things but sin. He has done this in order to reveal God to us and to be for us a pattern of human life lived in the way that God wants us to live it. As much as Paul emphasizes the individual person's response in faith and commitment to Christ, he also insists on the importance of the community. From the beginning, baptism was seen both as a way by which individual believers are united with Jesus in his death and resurrection, and as a ritual by which we enter into and become members of the community of the church. The first glimpse we have of the church in the New Testament can be found in the opening chapters of the Acts of the Apostles. They describe Peter proclaiming the gospel on the first Christian Pentecost. A large number of people respond positively to what he says, are baptized, and join with other believers in the community of the church. They devoted themselves, Acts tells us, to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and prayers. Although some people today are turning away from the church while seeking to foster a deeply personal relation to Christ, it is simply a fact that from the beginning of Christianity, it involved the church, the community of those who believe in Jesus and in the salvation which he won for us. In the pastoral letters, Paul encourages the younger colleagues to ensure that the local churches will have the kind of leadership without which they will be unable to survive, let alone grow, in the face of the challenges it would inevitably meet in the world and culture of that time. In these letters, we hear of deacons, elders or presbyters, and of a bishop. They are to preach the gospel, preside at liturgies, care for the poor and the vulnerable. The focus in today's reading is less on what such offices and positions entail and more on the kind of people who are to be chosen to fulfill them. The elders or presbyters, Paul says, should be blameless, married only once, and whose children are believers. The qualities required for the bishop are more extensive. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered, Paul declares, or addicted to wine or violence or greedy for gain. He must be able to preach sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict it. Out of this beginning, the worldwide church that we know eventually developed. Church leaders and church structures exist in order to nurture and nourish the spiritual life of believers. They do that through word and sacrament, preaching and the Eucharist. We've been confronted over the last few decades by failures on a major scale of church people, including priests, religious, and bishops. Because of such abuses, some have turned away from the institutional church and in some cases from religion itself. The church, in all its rich complexity, is central to what is involved in being a Christian. In spite of its inevitable administrative and other structures, in spite, too, of the moral failures of so many of us, the church at its core is a spiritual reality, a community animated by the Spirit of God and of Christ, a community of prayer and worship, a community built on and sustained by the regular celebration of the Eucharist. A few weeks ago, Pope Francis marked the 60th anniversary of the beginning of the Second Vatican Council at a Mass in St. Peter's Basilica, in the course of which he spoke of its vision of the Church. The Council saw the Church, he said, less as an institution and more as the mystery of grace generated by love. He expressed the hope that building on the Council's vision, we might overcome all polarization and conflict within the Church. 
Today, more than ever, we need a spiritual renewal radiating from the heart of the church and interacting in a positive way with other Christians, with members of other religious traditions, with people of goodwill everywhere as we struggle to confront the great issues facing our world from war, terror, poverty, climate change. If the church is to be all that Christ intended it to be, we will all have to contribute in whatever way we can to the renewal of its life and mission. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all those listed in the Daily TV Mass Book of Remembrance, and for all who have died and have no one to pray for them, for the souls of purgatory, we ask you, Heavenly Father, to grant them eternal life and to let perpetual life shine upon them. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and for those who are collaborating with him in his efforts to renew the life of the Church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of war, terror, and of every form of violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly and the chronically ill, and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine, we become partakers of his divinity, we became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Gracious God, we ask you, wash me from my sin, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we... As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. We gather each day in the Father's love. We gather with Jesus, His Son. We gather in faith with the Spirit of God. We gather together as one. We offer our peace. We offer our love. We offer As a member of our daily TV Mass community, you have often heard that the televising of a Mass has been made possible through a kind donation from an estate. In these cases, a person who has taken great comfort from the daily TV Mass wanted to leave a legacy that will enable others to also watch the Mass. To find out how you can leave a legacy that supports the daily TV Mass, please call our office for more information.